Dear students, this is Dr. A. G. Sinha, Professor in Department of Physiotherapy, Punjabi University, Patiala. The subject matter of this module is Conductive Thermal Modalities. Heat and cold are age-old methods to relieve pain and discomfort. Warm water induces relaxation is a common knowledge. The application of ice immediately after injury alleviates pain and suffering. In the field of sports medicine, heat and cold finds extensive application. In this module, we shall be talking about a select group of modalities known as conductive thermal modalities because these modalities use conduction as a method of heat transfer. We shall be looking at the general effect of temperature elevation and also the effects of temperature reduction. We will discuss the physiological effect, therapeutic uses, contraindication and dangers associated with these modalities. Learning objectives. After Going through this module, you should be able to understand the nature of heat, explain the process of heat transfer, know the classification of heating modalities, discuss the physiological effects of heat and cold, explain the therapeutic use of heat and cold, and understand the contraindications of heat and cold. Heat is a form of energy which is measured in temperature. Heat flows from high energy field to low energy field. Heat is interchangeable with other forms of energy such as mechanical, electrical, chemical or electromagnetic energy. Heat within a substance is due to increased molecular motion. Heat is present in every matter. It is only through the transfer of heat the temperature changes takes place. In fact, heat is considered as the primordial energy present within matter. When a body receives heat energy, its temperature is raised and it is said to become hot. On the other hand, when the heat flows out from a body and its temperature reduces, then the body is said to become cold. The use of giving heat for the purpose of increasing temperature is called heating or thermotherapy. Whereas the use of applying cold so that heat is removed from the body is called cryotherapy. Hot pack, paraffin wax bath, shortwave diathermy, microwave diathermy, infrared, etc. are some of the agents for heating whereas ice and various coolant sprays are used for reducing the temperature of the body part. There is a rationale for using different heat modalities. Although the effect of every modality is temperature elevation, but the extent of temperature raise and the amount of tissue heated by these modality differs. The different modalities of thermotherapy raises the temperature of various layers of body and their depth of penetration is different. The thermal modalities are generally categorized under two broad headings, superficial heating modalities and deep heating modalities. Hot packs, paraffin wax bath, infrared, etc. are known as superficial heating modality as they raise the temperature of superficial tissue. Shortwave diathermy, microwave diathermy and ultrasound are called deep heating modalities because they can elevate the temperature of deep tissue. There is another difference between these two 
group of modalities. The deep heating modality can increase the temperature of deeper part of tissue without increasing the temperature of superficial tissue. This is known as volume heating. And because of this property, these modalities are used for selectively heating the deeper tissue, the effect which may not be possible by the use of superficial heating modality. In superficial heating modality, the heating is confined to the superficial tissue such as skin and subcutaneous fat and fascia. And it is through conduction the heat is transferred to the deeper tissue. So therefore, at any point of time, the if we compare the temperature of superficial and deeper tissue, then in superficial heating modality, the temperature of deeper tissue will always be less than the temperature of the skin. And this acts as a major barrier for heating the deeper tissue. The deep heating modality such as diathermy overcome this problem. We have discussed the deep heating modality in another module. In this module, we will confine ourselves to the superficial heating modality and in general, we shall speak about the nature of heat and the physiological effects of heat and how these effects can be used for therapeutic purposes. Superficial heating modalities are also known as conductive heating modalities because they use the mechanism of conduction for heat transfer. There are three methods of heat transfer, conduction, convection and radiation. Conduction is the mechanism of heat transfer where body of higher temperature comes in direct contact with a body of lower temperature and transfers its internal kinetic energy by direct molecular collision. Upon receiving energy, the molecules vibrate in their mean position and collides with another molecules, which then undergo similar vibration. Over a period of time, the temperature of entire pathway is increased. Conduction takes place in solids. Heat transfer through convection takes place in gas and liquid where molecules are loosely bound. Here, the heat transfer involves movement of molecule from hot place to the cold place and subsequent movement of molecule of cooler area to hot area and this sets up a convection current. The characteristic feature of the conduction and convection is the change of the temperature of connecting pathway which connects the hot body to cold body. That means the path is also heated along with the desired object. The radiation is the third method of heat transfer where heat is transferred from hot body to cold body without affecting the intervening path. This is the mechanism of heat transfer from sun to earth. This method of heat transfer requires conversion of heat energy into electromagnetic energy which when absorbed by another body is converted back into thermal energy. Absorption of radiation is the key feature in this mode of heat transfer. If the energy is not absorbed, then there shall be no production of heat. The radiation does not transfer energy to any other matter present in the pathway that do not absorb radiation. Thus, when a dry towel is placed over skin being exposed to a source of infrared radiation, only the temperature of skin gets elevated, not that of towel. This is in contrast to hot pack application where the temperature of towel is raised first, then the thermal energy goes to skin. This phenomena provides the basis of selectively heating different tissue as they have different ability to absorb electromagnetic radiations. The effect of heating depends on the degree of temperature elevation, the rate of heating and the volume of tissue exposed. In human body, elevation of temperature produce two distinct type of effect. The first one is the physical effects of heat which if excessive 
can lead to burn. The second group of effects are the physiological reactions occurring within body in order to dissipate heat and protect the tissue from burn. Range of temperature changes the physical properties of certain tissue. The extensibility of collagen is increased with temperature elevation and they can be elongated to new length without any compromise in the structural strength. Heat also reduces the viscosity of joint fluid and reduces the resistance to movement. Within certain range, heat increases the rate of metabolic chemical reaction. It is claimed that within therapeutic limit, one degree increase in temperature would cause a 13% increase in the metabolic rate. Increase of temperature beyond 45 degree would inhibit activities of enzymes and proteins and would produce direct damage to the cell. Application of heat exerts direct and indirect effect on blood vessels and make them dilate. This contributes to increased blood flow to the part. The basic purpose of this increased blood flow is to dissipate heat. However, in the process it also brings more oxygen, nutritive elements and cells that contributes to improve the trophic status of the part may serve to enhance the rate of healing and resolution of inflammation. It is a common observation that range of motion of joint is reduced following any injury. The deposition of excessive fibrous tissue during healing and positioning of part that keeps some structure such as joint capsule, tendon, muscle and ligament in shortened position are the reason for this limitation of range of motion. The limitation of range of motion not only decreases the efficacy of movement but also contributes to pain. It also increases the chance of re-injury of the part. Selectively raising the temperature of contracted tissue and subjecting them to stretch is the ideal treatment to deal with this situation. The application of heat help relieve the morning stiffness of rheumatoid arthritis. Increased blood flow serve to enhance the rate of healing and resolution of inflammation. It is common observation that range of motion of a joint is reduced following any injury. There are two reasons for this reduction. One is the deposition of excessive fibrous tissue during healing and second one is the positioning of the part that keeps some structure in shortened position. The deficiency in range of motion not only decreases the efficiency of movement but also contributes to pain. It also increases the chance of re-injury. Raising the temperature of the contracted tissue and subjecting them to stretch is the ideal treatment to deal with this situation. Therefore, the heat modalities are commonly used in the condition of stiffness. For the similar region, we see that application of heat relieves the morning stiffness of rheumatoid arthritis patient. Heat relieves pain and muscular spasm associated with a variety of musculoskeletal disorder. Heat and cold stimulates the sensory nerve endings which contributes to relieve pain as counter irritant. When we talk about the danger and contraindication of heat therapy, the most immediate danger comes to our mind is burn. Burn is an inherent danger of heat application and every effort should be made to avoid burn. There are certain situations where the chance of burn increases manifold and it is better not to apply heat therapy in these conditions. Reduced or impaired thermal sensation or inability to detect and communicate heat is one of the most important contraindication of heat therapy. Failure of patient to perceive and report heat may lead to excessive heat application. The tissue having reduced venous and arterial blood supply should also be treated with extreme caution as they lack normal physiological mechanism of heat loss. 
Further, with rise in metabolic rate, the increased demand for oxygen and nutritive elements shall not be met and they may suffer irreversible injury due to lack of blood supply. Hemorrhage due to rupture of blood vessel is an absolute contraindication of heat therapy because heat causes dilation of blood vessel and may increase bleeding. Application of heat in acute inflammation contributes to increase the inflammatory response and therefore heat should not be applied within 24 to 48 hours after any injury. In addition to these general contraindications, there are specific contraindications associated with different modalities. We shall be talking about these special contraindication in the later part of this lecture when we discuss individual modality. Now we shall discuss the features of some commonly used conductive thermal modalities. The first modality is paraffin wax bath. Paraffin wax bath is a very common modality seen in physiotherapy department. Low melting point and low specific heat of paraffin makes it an ideal agent for heat transfer. The melting point of paraffin wax is around 54 degree which is reduced further to 40 to 45 degree by adding mineral oil. Due to low specific heat, wax is not felt as hot as the water of the same temperature. During cooling, wax solidifies and releases its latent energy which gets transferred into the body tissue through conduction. Wax conducts heat more slowly than water. This allows a slow heat buildup in tissue. All these properties contributes to minimize the risk of burn. Further, the molten wax surrounds evenly the irregular body parts such as hands and feet and provide a uniform heating. Paraffin wax bath is commonly used to treat hand and feet. The equipment of paraffin wax bath consists of a metal or plastic chamber having a heating element. Molten wax is kept in a thermostatically controlled chamber that maintains the temperature of wax between 40 to 45 degrees Celsius. Wax can be applied to the part by dip, pour and brush methods. Dip method is most common and convenient. Patient first dips the body part in the molten wax and then removes it when a thin layer of wax is formed over the surface. Repetition of this process 7 to 10 times allows thick layers of wax to be deposited over the skin. The part is wrapped in a towel to retain the heat. After 20 minutes, the solidified wax is gently removed and put back into the paraffin wax bath chamber. Paraffin wax bath is an effective treatment of stiffness that follows after immobilization. Mineral oils present in wax lubricates the skin and make it soft and supple. The specific contraindication of paraffin wax bath include open wound and infected skin lesion. Wax can be applied to the area of diminished sensation after taking adequate precaution. Hot water is the age-old and inexpensive method to heat the body. Water has high conductivity and high specific heat. Therefore, it releases its heat quickly. There are two principal ways of using hot water in heat therapy, immersion method and hot packs. In immersion method, part is dipped in the water, whereas in pack methods, warm, wet or dry pad is placed over the body. In immersion method, patient submerges its body part into a specifically designed chamber containing warm water. These chambers are known as Hubbard tank and whirlpool. Dipping hand or feet in a pot containing water also produces similar effect and is a very popular method for applying mild superficial heat. Hubbard tank allows total or half immersion of body in reclined position whereas in whirlpool immerse part is in vertical and dependent position. 
in addition to thermostatistically controlled heating element that maintains the temperature of water, these equipment also have a motor that produces agitation in the water and creates whirls within the water. Agitation of water can be used for cleaning the open wound and also for inducing greater relaxation. The total body immersion does not allow heat loss through sweating and it can produce rise in the core temperature leading to systemic effects on cardiopulmonary system. It should be used with caution in person having disorders of cardiorespiratory system. Now we will discuss the hot packs. Hot packs are applied over the body parts. In simplest form, a hot pack is made by dipping a terry towel or a woolen cloth in hot water and wringing out the excessive water. The pack transfers its thermal energy to body rapidly and the temperature of pack drops to body temperature within 5 minutes. Thereafter, the pack has to be replaced. Hydrocollator pack is a method in which low heat is applied for a relatively long period. It consists of bag made up of cotton or canvas. These bags contain small pieces of silica. Bag is then submerged in a thermostatistically controlled chamber filled with water at temperature 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. Silica absorbs large quantities of water and retains heat for longer period. For application, the bag is removed from chamber, placed between layers of terry towel and applied over the body part. This method slowly transfers heat to body and comes to room temperature in about 15 to 20 minutes. The hydrocollator packs apply moist heat. The other type of hot pack include hot water rubber bag and electrical heating. These packs provide dry heating. Moist pack is said to have little greater penetration than the dry heat pack. The rate of heat transfer in these hot pack methods is regulated by the layer of towel. Packs are effective for treating flat areas of body. Patient should never be put on pack as it may produce excessive heat transfer and increase the chance of burn. Fluidotherapy is a new method of superficial heating. It is also known as dry whirlpool. This modality utilizes warm air flown through fine granules of cellulose to create the effect of warm immersion. The flow of air suspends the cellulose particle and creates an environment that behaves like fluid. When the heated cellular particles strikes the skin, they transfer their heat, stimulate the sensory nerve ending and provide gentle compression. In this way, the effects of heat, massage and water is produced simultaneously. The system of fluidotherapy consists of a large metal chamber that contains cellulose powder prepared from corn cob. It also requires a source of warmed air and controlling unit to regulate the temperature and flow of air. Patient inserts the distal parts of the limb through a hole in the chamber. Temperature range for treatment varies from 38 to 47 degrees Celsius. Agitation of the air flow can be controlled according to the patient's comfort level. Like whirlpool, patient can also move its body part in the chamber and various range of motion and stretching exercises can be carried out while receiving heat therapy. Open wound is a specific contraindication of this modality. Cryotherapy is the application of agents that reduces the temperature of body. Ice is the most commonly used cryotherapy agent. In addition, cold water and cryotherapy chambers are also used to reduce the temperature of the body part. There are several methods of application of cryotherapy. These ranges from ice cube, ice cold pack, vasocoolant spray, 
आइस बाथ इमर्शन इन आइस कोल्ड वाटर कोल्ड वर्ल पूल एंड क्रायोथेरापी चैम्बर्स इन कूलिंग द हीट एक्सचेंज टेक्स प्लेस इन रिवर्स डायरेक्शन द हीट ऑफ द बॉडी पार्ट इज ट्रांसफर्ड टू द कूलिंग एजेंट दैट कम्स इन कॉन्टैक्ट विद द स्किन सिंस हीट फ्लोज फ्रॉम हायर टेम्परेचर टू लोअर टेम्परेचर मोर इज द टेम्परेचर ग्रेडियंट मोर शैल बी द रिजल्टिंग टिश्यू चेंज द अदर फैक्टर दैट प्लेज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल इज द लैटेंट हीट द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ आइस ब्रिंग्स मोर रैपिड कूलिंग देन इमर्शन इन आइस कोल्ड वाटर to convert 1 g of ice at 0 degree to raise the temperature of 1 g of ice to 37 degree celsius 491 joule energy is required which is much higher than that required to raise the temperature of 1 g of water at 0 degree to 37 degree therefore even if the water temperature is kept at 0 degree ice application produces greater cooling and cold water is no substitute for ice thermal conductivity of tissue is the other factor upon which the extent and depth of cooling varies the tissue having good thermal conductivity such as muscle and blood can be cooled and rewarmed easily than the non conductive subcutaneous fat therefore in obese persons longer exposure of cold is required to achieve reduction in intramuscular temperature beside conduction evaporation is another way of cooling the part evaporation is one of the principal mechanisms by which human body loses heat in hot environment sweat release from sweat glands draws the heat from body and converts into vapor the energy required for this conversion of liquid into gas is typically described as the boiling point in evaporative cooling a fluid with a low boiling point is spread over the surface of body heat absorbed by the liquid to change its status reduces the temperature of skin the physiological effects of cryotherapy reducing the temperature of tissue produces a number of local and systemic physiological effects when ice is applied over the skin the mechanism of heat preservation gets activated and produces an interesting response of the blood vessels in this response the blood vessel pass through the phase of alternate constriction and dilation further first there occurs rapid vasoconstriction and reduced blood flow which after 5 minute changes into vasodilation leading to increased blood flow this is followed by another spell of vasoconstriction and subsequent waves of increased and reduced blood flow this alternate constriction and dilation of small blood vessels is known as lewis hunting reaction this reaction represents an attempt of body to minimize heat loss and to protect the tissue from ischemia of vasoconstriction this mechanism is the basis of using cryotherapy for reducing swelling following an injury cold increases the viscosity of blood and increases resistance to blood flow this also contributes to reduced blood flow to the cold part cold also reduces the conduction velocity of motor and sensory nerve and also contributes to pain relief cold may also reflexly inhibit spinal motor neuron and contributes to reduction of muscle spasm and spasticity cold reduces the metabolic rate of tissue and after acute phase of inflammation application of cold actually retards the process of healing muscle strength is reduced after cold application and so is the motor skills probably due to increased viscosity of body fluid and lower metabolic rate of tissue the application of ice first produces a sensation of intense cold which soon gets converted into a sensation of pain thereafter the part becomes numb therapeutic uses of cryotherapy 
In acute stage of any injury, ice is the modality of choice along with rest, compression and elevation. Cold prevents the extension of inflammation and inhibit the release of chemical mediators of inflammation due to its effect on blood flow. During immediate post-operative phase, cryotherapy is a valuable tool to reduce pain and control swelling. Both ice and heat provide relief from muscular spasm and spasticity. But if the muscular spasm is associated with acute inflammation, the cold should be preferred over heat as heat may exacerbate inflammation. Another technique of ice is known as cryokinetics. This technique combines ice with exercise. Icing along with exercise can be used in the later stage of tissue healing to aid in restoration of range of motion and strength. This technique is known as cryokinetics. In this technique, first ice is applied to numb the part and then various stretching and strengthening exercises are performed by patient. After that, once again ice is applied. This process is repeated two to three times in a session. The technique of cryotherapy reduces the exercise induced soreness and mitigates possible trauma and inflammation that may result due to movement of delicate recently healed tissue during exercise. Contraindications of cryotherapy Excessive cooling may give rise to cold burn or frostbite. Compromised vascular status and allergy to cold are the known conditions where application of ice should not be considered. Application of ice over those area where nervous tissue is superficial should be done carefully to avoid possible neural damage. Now we shall discuss the different techniques of application of cryotherapy. Ice cube massage, ice pack or cold pack, ice towel or cold compresses, immersion in water mixed with ice, chemical cold packs and vasocoolant sprays are some of the techniques of cryotherapy. In addition, nowadays equipments are available that apply sequential compression along with cooling. This intermittent compression device combines the effect of compression and cooling and proved effective in combating swelling associated with acute injuries. Ice cube massage and cold packs are the two very common method of ice application. Ice massage or moving a block of ice over the surface to be cooled is an effective technique to treat smaller areas. Depending on the duration of application, it can produce two distinct effects. Pain relief due to counter irritation and facilitation of muscle contraction. Keeping ice over muscle for 4 to 5 seconds or stroking the dermatome produces stimulation of thermal receptor and facilitates muscle contraction. This technique is known as excitatory cold. For pain relief, ice massage should be applied at least for 5 to 10 minutes. Large areas are treated with ice packs which can effectively be retained in place for 15 to 20 minutes. There are three types of pack, dry ice pack, wet ice pack and commercial ice pack. Ice packs can be prepared by putting a crushed ice in a polythene bag. Alternately, ice flags can be wrapped in a terry towel. The commercial available ice pack contain viscous water-based gel that does not solidify upon cooling. These packs are malleable and can conform to the body contour to ensure uniform cooling. Cold packs are usually placed over a dry towel to minimize intense sensory stimulation and discomfort. Ice towel or cold compress is a technique to cool larger surface area. In this technique, a terry towel soaked in a mixture of crushed eye and cold water is wrapped over the skin. The excess water should be wrung out. The heat holding capacity of ice towel is poor and it gets warmer earlier. Therefore, it should be replaced by another towel after every 2-3 to three minutes. This is an effective technique to reduce 
core body temperature as seen in high fever and heat stroke. Like heat, cold can be applied through local or general immersion methods. A body part is dipped in the water mixed with eye. Local immersion targets one part of body, whereas in general immersion, whole body or half body is submerged in a water containing tank. General immersion is now increasingly being used to facilitate recovery of the tired athletes. Now we discuss one modality where the heat and cold are applied alternatively. This method is known as contrast bath. The contrast bath method intends to utilize the beneficial effect of both heat and cold while tending to avoid the negative effects of each modality. Administration of contrast bath requires two chambers, one filled with hot water and other with cold water. Patient is instructed to dip the distal body part alternatively in two tubs. Treatment begins with immersion in hot water for 2-3 minutes, followed by immersion in cold water for 1 minute. The process is repeated 5-6 to six times. The treatment ends with immersion in cold water. The contrast bath produces intense stimulation of thermal receptors of skin, which is said to reduce pain in accordance with gate control theory. The stimulation of thermal receptor also thought to activate autonomic reflexes and bring about improvement of circulation of both ipsilateral and contralateral extremity. The alternate vasodilation and vasoconstriction helps improve blood flow and reduces swelling by promoting absorption of accumulated fluid. The stiff joint of rheumatoid arthritis and reflex sympathetic dystrophy are usually treated by this method. Contrast bath treatment is considered effective in relieving pain and reducing swelling associated with subacute stage of joint sprain, muscle strain and tendinitis. Now at the end of this lecture, let us summarize the main points. We have seen that heat gain or heat loss produces a number of physiological effects within body. Many of these effects can be used to relieve symptoms associated with musculoskeletal injuries. The effect produced by superficial thermal modalities are largely confined to the superficial layer of the skin. The subcutaneous fat layer provides substantial resistance to temperature flow to the deeper part of the body. Paraffin wax bath, hot pack, underwater immersion and fluidotherapy are some of the common superficial heating modalities that increases the local blood flow. Ice massage, ice pack, ice towel and vasocoolant spray are some of the common cryotherapy modalities. Cryotherapy modalities reduces the temperature of body part and are proved valuable in treating acute injuries. Interestingly, both heat and cold relieves muscular spasm, but the cold reduces blood flow, whereas the heat increases the blood flow. Therefore, when the muscular spasm is associated with acute inflammation, cold therapy should be preferred over heat therapy as the application of heat in acute inflammation would contribute to the exacerbation of symptoms. Thank you.